they all want to be in this show and I'm delighted that uh, WBA featherweight champion Lee Wood joins us live. Lee, good afternoon to you, my friend. Five months on from beating Josh Warrington. What now for you? I'd love to, uh, to answer that question with a a very quick answer, but at the minute, I'm in no man's land. I'm not sure what's happening yet. Um, I love the rematch. I think the rematch makes sense, but um, yeah, I just don't know what's happening at the minute. Um, I'm a free agent, which is a good thing sometimes, but um, at the same breath, you know, I'd like to stay with Matchroom. I'd like to, I'd like to continue the journey that I started on with them, but um, things got a bit quiet with him at the minute. So if I don't get something nailed down soon in my last year of fighting, I'm probably going to have to explore different avenues. Yeah, that, that surprises me, Lee, because you've had a fantastic 12 months or so, haven't you? I mean, going, even going back to the Michael Conlin fight, a fight where you, you know, showed your character in that fight, winning that fight in the fight, um, 12th and final round, fight of the year contender there. Then you fast forward, Maurizio Lara, you know, you lost that contest. Three months later, you come back and beat him again against all the odds. Then against Josh Warrington as well. I mean, you show real character, one of the you know, real real fighting men of, of British boxing right now. So, um, yeah, you, you've been a credit to the sport, mate. Thank you, Spence, mate. Yeah, you know what? I don't think I've ever been in a dual fight my whole career, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I'm a promoter's dream, aren't I, really? Do you know, um, do you know what? I, I just want to be busy. I, want, I, I was so busy last year, now with a few months break, it feels like double the time, do you know, because I'm so used to being extremely busy. Um, and like I said, I'm into probably my last year of fighting. I want to fight as much as possible because any fight could be my last fight. So I want to be big. I want to, you know, meet the most this last year. Yeah, Lee, I wanted to ask you, mate, what do they put in the water up there in Nottingham? I mean, Cole Frotch comes to mind, and we remember the fights where he come from behind all the time and come back, but just that will to win and bite down on your gum shield and never give up hope. You know, Frotch with that Jermaine Taylor pulled it off in the last round, like you did against Michael Conlin, actually. And, you know, even last time against Josh Warrington, things weren't going your way, but you just, like, don't lose heart, man. And I think that that is... That is a real fighting spirit that the younger generation should should inspire to. Yeah, it's not over till it's over. Um, I was at, I was with Carl I was with Carl at the darts uh, last Friday, was it or Thursday? And um, he said to me, you know, it, it's just strange. Uh, we're both in our first world title defense, got dropped early, and then won in the twelfth round. Um, scary stuff. Got a lot of similarities with Carl, but. Um, yeah, definitely something in the water. I, I, I actually don't get it, though, Lee. I mean, I've seen your fight. I've watched your fights. You are a promoter's dream. So why has it gone quiet for you? Um, I'm not too sure, you know. Um, I think the the Warrington fight makes sense. A lot of the other champions, which I would prefer to fight for a title, they're all tied up. Um, I'm not sure it's because myself and Josh want a certain amount of money, but we're going to fill a stadium no matter where we are. And it's um, it's bums on seats, it's eyes on TV. I think the second fight, uh, if it is to happen, would be a lot bigger than the first. You know, there's genuine need of that now. Like we, we genuinely dislike each other. Things he said and how he's gone about things since the defeat, I just think it's very sour and uh, very bitter. Um, so for one, I'd love to I'd love to shut him up for good. Have, have yeah. there been offers exchanged? Yeah, we have convers- we've had conversations on that. Um, I think we're just waiting for Matching to come back to us. Um, with something new, um, a new offer. But like I said, it's something that I think makes sense. Um, and I like to do it in my own city, if possible. I feel like I, I want a homecoming. Um, like I said, again, it, I don't know which which is going to be my last, my last fight. It could be my last fight. And if it is my last fight, I, I'd prefer it to be in my own city, in front of my own crowd. I feel like I've deserved it. Yeah, definitely. I wanted the city ground, I wanted the city ground fight, and obviously yeah. that didn't materialise. Um, so in the back of my head, I want to do a three-fight deal with that in the end game. But I might not get there. I'm yeah, of course, of course. Good. I mean, Simon, I watched the tennis last night. I watched Andy Murray writing a, a camera at the end of his win over the, the Italian player, Life in the Old Dog Yet. Well, I'm not saying that Lee Wood's an old dog, but he's, there is st- still plenty of mileage on his clock. So why? Why are the promoters not making this happen? Well, I think Lee will know that. I think it's probably the economics uh, of the fight. Do you, I mean, Josh wants the fight, doesn't he, Lee? Yeah, I think Josh is keen on the fight. Um, I'm keen on the fight. Um, like I said, you know, Matching would take a bit of time, so um, I haven't got time in the minute. So if there's nothing on the table soon, uh, within the next month or so, you know, I'm going to have to explore different promoters and that. And I prefer to stay with Matching, but um, like I said, my time's ticking. I'm into my last year of fighting. But what are they saying to you? I mean, ultimately, you, you know, you've got a, a ready-made dance partner. You've got a great fight from the first time round um, that was challenging for you, but in the end, you knocked him out and knocked him out convincingly. And there is bad blood. 
in terms of Josh's reaction to it because he's disappointed with the outcome. So what what, what are you being told? You've got the leading promoter, <laughs> mm. arguably. Yeah, I don't, I don't but want to you must be being told something, about, Lee. Yeah, I don't want to talk too much about that side of things. But um, Well, if you haven't but, got Josh Warrington, we'll get, we'll, think, what other options are there? We're getting I think we're getting closer. Um, uh, like I said, you know, it makes sense for everyone. Um, me and Josh obviously want a certain amount of a certain person, you know, we're demanding a certain amount of money, so it's got to make sense for them as well. And I, like I said, I think it's a bigger fight this time around. They genuinely, I like, genuinely dislike him. Um, mm. He said a lot of things about me, um, and I think you know it's going to be a bigger fight. So, but that's it, reflecting. The, I know, I know, since that's twice Lee's mentioned money, and maybe yeah. the money that, that is being offered isn't enough in the eyes of Lee and Josh. Yeah, listen, Jim, but look, they're both fan friendly. The people like watching their styles. You know exactly what you're going to get from both guys. They both bring their brilliant entertainment. You know, they'll fill a stadium. So they should demand money. Yes. You know, we're in a yeah. hurt business here and these guys, you know, pull it on the line. And like I say, it's, it's sheer entertainment. One thing you can guarantee with Josh Warrington and with Lee Wood is you're going to get a real fight, a serious fight. It's not going to be a ball fest, you know, and they will fill a stadium. So why not demand the money? Yeah. In the meantime, I, I suppose all you can do is keep yourself busy, Lee, right? I'm always, literally, I've only just made this interview, just come back from the gym. Um, I'm always training, like I said. And you're like, yeah, I ain't got time to to sit around and feel sorry for myself. I'm always training, just in the chance, you know, something could pop up early summer. I think I'll, I'll be prepared, ready to fight for for June time, whether that's Josh or someone else. But um, you know, I just want to be busy. I my, mean, my Lee, 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 it could be one fight, could be two, could be three. I want to be busy. You're right to want that, mate, because only recently you were announced fighter of the year at the British Boxing Board of Control Awards. I mean. You've done you've done your side of the deal. I would suggest you've you've done your side of the bargain. Yeah, um, when I accepted the award, I said to him, you know, I was nominated for Fight of the Year with Josh as well. And um, I'm kind of glad I didn't win that award because it's it's good to be in Fight of the Year once, but you don't want to be in Fight of the Year every single year, you know. <laughs> it can't be good for your health. But, um, yeah. To finally win Fight of the Year, um, it was an honour. Um, and just thank everyone who nominated and, and picked me because uh, it was some year and it's something to look back on, some achievement. Listen, Lee, we wish you well, mate. Lee Wood, WBA featherweight champion, uh, always good value in the ring and out of it, as you've just heard with us live uh, on Talk Sport. Uh, Spencer, answer me this, mate. It, that one we, for, for Lee baffles us somewhat. Uh, and then we hear, but it's it's not so baffling because the fight's been rescheduled. Josh Taylor, Jack Cattrall. You begin to think, is this fight cursed? The, the rematch had been postponed and will, will not take place on April 27 because Taylor has suffered an injury. I don't know what that is. It's now re, it's an eye injury, I hear. It, it's now been rescheduled for May 25. You, do you begin to wonder, is this thing going to happen? Listen, it is a fight that seems to be cursed. You know, we go back, to this, this is two years in the making now and it's finally, we got it over the line. I know it's something Jack Cattrall was wanted for a long time since that you know controversial defeat and Josh Taylor decided to take a different route he went over to America Teofimo Lopez understand why he was doing that why he was going there but now it seems like the right time for Josh Taylor and Jack Cattrall to get it on it's still a huge fight and Josh Taylor yeah I believe sustained an injury to his eye and from yeah. the medical advice he's been told to postpone it let's just hope we get that fight on because you know it's a fight that we've all wanted to see and it's on British shores which is great are you not sure, Simon? Uh, uh, I'm looking at your expression. No, here. I'm I mean, thinking about something else. I was thinking about what I wanted to ask Lee Wood was, what, what, do you know who's answer this question? Why did yeah. he vacate his featherweight title? Um, I don't know the, the the real reason behind it. I think there was other options on the table at the time. That's what I believe it was. Hmm. Strange. He's a WBA featherweight champion in the world and vacates his title. Hmm. This is, I would maybe imagine, I would maybe he was this, promised something that never happened. Well, this is the question you know, that ultimately he didn't want to answer. He wanted to complain about not being able to fight, but not tell us the reasons why. <laughs> yeah. uh, and if you vacate a world title, there must be something a little bit going on there, mustn't there? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You might but touch on something there. I mean, Josh Taylor and Jack Cattrall. I mean, the, I, I mean, are you, are you? Do you believe this fight won't happen? No, I think it will happen. Oh, yeah. hang on. Yeah. There's a long old pause there for you. There was. You're normally writing. Yeah, no, because there is a, there is a, there is a. A bit of me that doubts it because of because of it keep getting delayed and whatnot. Do you know what concerns me? I'm going to put it on the table, actually. I'll put it on the table. What really concerns me is the fight being made at 140, and I think that's through Josh Taylor's ego saying, listen, I've got to right the wrongs of the last fight. Yeah. Josh Taylor has outgrown 140 pounds as a fighter. We saw that in his performance against Teofimo Lopez okay, last so. time. We saw it against Jack Cattrall. As you get older, the body's harder to stay down he, there. He's in the twilight of his he career. He will refute that. And he, and he, disputed, I know he, does. he disputed I know he it does. emphatically. He said, I didn't get it right on both of those fights. 
and I'm more educated. And he was the one that insisted upon 140. We make the conspiracy theory that if he took it at a catch weight and took it at 142, 143, everyone would have said that you ducked fighting Cattrall at the yeah. weight that ultimately you, you, they, they think Jack Cattrall beat you in. I mean, look, they delayed the fight by four weeks. It happened with Liam Smith yeah, and true. Chris Eubank Jr. True. There's a lot it's of money on this fight. It's just happened with Tyson fight. and Usyk. You know, this, uh, these I, things I th happen. I think they'll fight. I, I think we'll absolutely fight. And then I think it'll be a fascinating one. Yeah. yeah. Fascinating. Uh, Paul in Birmingham is uh, harping back to the Nathan Heaney, uh, Brad Paul's uh, fight. If that was to happen again, he says, I think Brad would beat Nathan, especially if the fight was away from the Midlands. But he sounds like he doesn't want the rematch, um, That that although that would be a brilliant fight. It sounds like there's very little between the two, Spencer. I'll tell you what, Jim, when you're the champion and you go, you have a fight like that, styles make fights and some guys, you know, that you're expected to beat, like he was against Brad Paul's. Right. You look at it and you go, that was a living nightmare for him. The boxing gods were with Nathan Heaney the other night because it could have gone either way. Yeah. Whatever he says, it could have gone either way, but he had to come through some torrid moments. Brad Paul's didn't. So what I'm saying is you go, once you've got away from that, you go, right, I'm still the champ. I'm going to take a different avenue. I understand it from the business point of view. Yeah. You go, why would you go over old ground when you've had a nightmare like that? Like, you know, I know, I understand it. Brad yeah. Paul's wants that return, but we're talking about business here. From a business point of view, Nathan Heaney will go, let me go to a different okay. avenue. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.